In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Why don't we just put our hands together. Let's welcome all those joining from Kingsgate Cambridge, Kingsgate Leicester, and those watching online. You know, it really is a privilege to be here uh, to share Vision Sunday 2024 to the whole Kingsgate Church family. You know, as many of you know, Karen and I uh, were called to Peterborough over 35 years ago to establish what has become Kingsgate Community Church. Um, we were very young. As you can see, <laughs> we had very little experience, people or money. But what we did have was a big vision from God inspired by prophetic word that was given to me, which was this, think big or you'll limit me. Now that kind of word really encouraged us. It firstly encouraged us in the early, really tough days when hardly anything outwardly seemed to be happening. It encouraged us to stay strong during a whole kind of 15 years of fast growth and blessing. It also encouraged us as we sought God and we sought to clarify our long-term mission as a church, which many of you know is transforming lives from our neighbourhoods to the nations by the power of God's love. Uh, thinking Big helped us to buy 12 and a half acres of land and to build this 83,000 square foot building. Thinking Big also inspired us to launch a second campus in, campus in Cambridge and then a third campus in Leicester, as well as to, as it were, enlarge our influence and as the Lord opened doors to bless many other churches and ministries, both in this nation and in other nations too. Thinking big helped us kind of keep going through the crisis of COVID. And it's also inspired us to set up our online campus and has helped us as we've seen rapid growth since COVID too. 
Now, this time last year, we still owed uh, a one million pounds on the mortgage for the Peterborough building and land. And so thinking big helped us to set a big goal to pay off the mortgage early in order to res- release more resources for future ministry and opportunities. And so, as many of you know, because of your amazing generosity, last March we took up that special offering and saw by far the largest single offering in our history. Amazing. And now because of strong giving throughout the rest of the year, Uh, In fact, our strongest year ever in our history. Guess how much we still owe on this building? Nothing. (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) I can officially announce that we are now (laughs) debt-free. Yeah. Now, this is obviously a momentous moment in our history. So I want to mark the moment Um, In a few weeks' time, Sunday the 25th of Feb, across all our campuses, we're going to have a a time of celebrating, thanking people and celebrating together uh, all that the Lord has done. So here we are, 35 years on, and a strong sense that our best days are ahead of us, not behind us. There is more to come. In fact, you know, we've been seeking the Lord as a leadership team for many months now, And sense that the Lord calling us, not just to look ahead to what He wants to do this year, as we often do, but to look a a little bit further out to the next three to five years. Element of flexibility there, three to five years. We don't have all the details, but what we do have is a strong sense that we're in a key transition time and it's time to look further ahead. There's something about that longer time span that means that we can think uh, in, in an enlarged way. Uh, how many know God can do amazing things anytime, but three to five years is a long period of time, you agree? So we can be bold in our thinking. But secondly, three to five years is near enough for it to be tangible and for us to start putting plans in place as we are. And the phrase that encapsulates this new vision, what we sense, and you'll already have seen it, is this phrase, think bigger and beyond. Can we say that together on the count of three? One, two, three. Think bigger and beyond. You see, to think big over 35 years ago was one thing. Took a lot of faith. (laughs) We had virtually nothing. But now here we are, 35 years on, and God has blessed this church with thousands of amazing people, with resources, with influence. Now we have a little bit more wisdom and experience than we had 35 years ago. Longevity of relationships and increasing favour, not just um, here, but also uh, across the body of Christ. And so thinking big To to, to purely think as we did then would be limiting God. Hence the call is to think bigger. Say bigger. To think bigger than we've ever done before. But this next season, we strongly sense, it's not just a question of more of the same, bigger of what we're already doing, although that's part of it. But also God is calling us to go to reach people, to go to places, and even to impact Um, nations and generations that we haven't yet done. So hence the phrase is not just think bigger, but think bigger and beyond. Now here's my conviction. If we all together, thousands of us across Kingsgate, will individually and collectively partner together with one another and with the Spirit of God, I really believe if we'll do this over the next three to five years, I am confident that in the next decade, the next 10 years, we will see God do more in and through us than we've seen in the whole 35 years so far by God's grace. That's what we're believing for. Amen. The best really is yet to come. As I say, we haven't worked out all the details. What we do have is, if you like, some prophetic headlines of what we sense the Lord wanting us to set our gaze on. And I'm basing some of what I'm been sharing on Acts chapter one. It's a marvelous passage. Um, It's a really significant transition moment. Jesus has just been raised from the dead and this is at the end of the 40 days between his resurrection and when he ascends to go to be with the Father. Now, let me just make clear that the transition and the, the, the moment there was a far more historically and dramatic 
turnaround and change than we're about to experience right now. Let me just make that clear. Do you agree? Jesus leaving earth to go to heaven was pretty significant. And then the outpouring of the Spirit. But I do believe there are some lessons that we can apply into our own kind of turning point here. And I want to um, look at this under kind of four key areas of how we're to think bigger and beyond. We'll look at this diagram here. Uh, you've got the four key dimensions and then right at the centre, there's something at the heart of it all. So first dimension of thinking bigger and beyond. I want to encourage all of us. I want to encourage my, I'm encouraging myself as I have been for the last year or so. I want to encourage you. We all need to think bigger and beyond personally. Say personally. You see that we are the body here and the body is made up of many parts. So if each of us allow the Lord to do a greater work in us, guess what's going to happen? It's going to be absolutely amazing. There's a sense that the unlimited God can do his unlimited work in and through us. The reality is though, is we're human beings, we're frail, stuff happens, life happens to us and therefore we can end up limiting God in our thinking or is it just me? I mean, why did God say to me all those years ago, think big or you'll limit me? Presumably because we have a human tendency to limit God. Now there can be all kinds of reasons why we live in the Lord. It may be insecurity, maybe a sense of failure, maybe we're not good enough, none of which are uh, true if we are in Christ, amen. But there's another thing that I believe often can hold us back from looking ahead with fresh faith and it's past disappointment. You see, we live in a broken world, we live in a fallen world, this side of the new heavens and the new earth, we are not gonna experience everything how we would like it to work out. And the reality is, they can just be some little knocks and we pick ourselves up, but sometimes disappointment can take a deeper root in our hearts. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. And I was praying just for our leadership community and just a couple of weeks ago, and in advance that meeting, I just sensed the Lord saying, I wanna heal and free a whole bunch of people from disappointment. And, so, and I believe that's so true right across Kingsgate. How many don't want anything of the past disappointment to hold you for, back from walking into the future promises that God has for your life? Amen. But sometimes we need the Holy Spirit's help. And so I, I'm, I believe the Lord wants to minister that today and over the next few days. And if we look back at the disciples, there's a sense in which they had just experienced what looked like one of the greatest disappointments in history. Here was Jesus uh, who they thought was the Messiah, doing signs and wonders, changing people ev everywhere he went. And then he gets tried, he gets scourged, he gets stripped, he gets nailed to a cross and he dies and his body is laid in the tomb. I mean, it was almost like all their hopes had just gone down the drain. But <laughs> that was not the end. Three days later, Jesus Christ physically rose from the dead. Amen. And he triumphed over sin and death. Even the thing that looked the most awful event in history, God turned it around by resurrecting Jesus. And so Jesus comes to the disciples and as well as it were proving his di divinity and the fact that he had conquered death, I believe he comes to them to almost like deal once and for all, all that sense of disappointment. Hence we read here in Acts 1 verse 3 that he spent 40 days not just appearing to them once, but many times, and he gave them many convincing proofs that he is alive. How many know Jesus is still alive and he wants to meet with us and he wants to free us to uh, 2,000 years later? But as well as past disappointment, there can be other things that can hold us from th enlarging our thinking. It can be a sense of um, complacency or weariness can be a sense of, well, our best days are uh, behind us, you know, why put the extra effort in? <laughs> I mean, I'm 60 now, I could put my feet up. <laughs> How many know we're not gonna because there's so much more that the Lord has for us, amen? He wants to enlarge our thinking for the future. And if you think of the disciples, here they are, They've had a pretty special three and a half years. How many think it would be pretty amazing to have been with Jesus for the three and a half years of his earthly ministry? I mean, stunning, isn't it? Yeah. Could argue in some ways the most stunning period of the whole of history. And so Jesus has to come to these disciples, deal with their disappointment, but deal with a sense of, oh no, Jesus, you're going. Uh, surely we can't, th this next season can't match what's happened. And in one sense, there was a uniqueness about that period. But Jesus comes to them time and again. If you read John 14, 16, he says something like, guys, it's better that I go away. 
They're like, how can this be better? Because the answer is, when he was on the earth, he was limited in his physical body. The spirit was on him. But when he gets raised from the dead, he is now the unlimited ruling and reigning Christ, present with his people everywhere by his Holy Spirit. Amen. And so he comes to enlarge their thinking. In the same way, Jesus wants to enlarge your thinking for your future. There is more that he wants to do in you and through you. Don't limit him by your small thinking, by unbelief or insecurity, past success or past failure. Let's say, Lord, why don't we say now, Lord, lift the limits off. We want to think bigger and beyond. Amen. Come on. Yeah, come on, let's thank the Lord for what he's going to do. But secondly, as we all do this together, there's another dimension that we need to home in on, which is God is calling us, I believe, particularly in this next season, to think bigger and beyond intergenerationally. Can we say that? Intergenerationally. If we go back to um, the the company of people who are here um, before Jesus' is. Uh, before his ascension and then afterwards, we see firstly, Jesus himself was 33. And because he he was a rabbi, the disciples would have all almost certainly been younger than him. So let's say teens and 20s. We often think they were like, some of them grew up to be old. John probably ended up at 90 before he finally died. But the point being that that there was was a, a generational impartation. And then if you read on a few verses in Acts beyond the reading that we've just read, in the upper room before on the getting ready for the day of Pentecost, I love this, was Jesus' mother. Don't you think that's wonderful? Mary herself was there on the day of Pentecost. How beautiful. In other words, we see even there, right at the seeds of the early church, it's an intergenerational community. And one of the things, of the many things that Karen and I are grateful for, what the Lord has done in the last 35 years, and we're so excited about what's to come, is that Kingsgate is a thoroughly intergenerational family. Amen. And whereas in, in culture, very often there are like intergenerational clashes and wars. I want to tell you, we're not going to have any wars or clashes between generations. We're going to have blessing and harmony, increasing measure, so that all generations can find their place in God's family. And so I just want to, you to just celebrate a couple of people. Firstly, I'd like you to welcome one of our newest members at Kingsgate, now, now the, the, the Ruth, Ruth is the mum, herself came when she was a little one, I love it. Here she is now holding a little one. Yeah, wonderful. And then I'd like you to just celebrate, I think it's our, he's our oldest member, he's 100 years old. Come on, let's just welcome. <laughs> and of course, most of the rest of us are somewhere in between. <laughs> But seriously, next three to five years, we want to continue pressing into the fact where every generation finds their place, feels at home, and fulfills their purpose. And one of the ways that I believe we can model that is by two-way, as it were, generational learning. Um, many, Karen and I have got many friends and colleagues of our kind of age and, and some older too. But also, much of my working week, I spend working with very godly and gifted people who are in their 20s and in their 30s. And as well as hopefully me being an influence positively to them, they teach me a whole bunch of things, including things like technology (laughs) and what's going on in culture. Seriously, there's there's this intergenerational blessing going on. So let's press into that over the next three to five years. But here's, here's the point I want to get to. Wherever you're at, and I want to include very deliberately, even if you're a young adult here today, or you're a middle, middling adult or a grand adult. All of us have a God-given responsibility more than ever to in, keep investing in next generations in order for the ongoing work of God's Spirit. Amen? We're not just to stop. We're not to become complacent. We need to keep intentionally investing in next generations. Let's make a fresh Kingsgate, uh, fresh commitment, Kingsgate, to the words of Psalm 78. We will tell, say we will tell. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord. So the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born. And they in turn will tell their own children. So each generation shall set its hope anew on God. Come on, will you believe with me for an intergenerational, ongoing, long-lasting move of God's Spirit? 
And so we need to, we need to think bigger. Firstly, we need to think bigger and, and just pour more energy and resources into what God is already doing. God is doing amazing things right now amongst our children, our youth, students, and young adults. In fact, why don't we just thank everybody who's directly investing in serving all our young people. Thank you. And if we're gonna keep enlarging, we need more people who are gonna get involved in those ministries. But it's not just about bigger, it's about beyond. We need to intentionally plan and sow into the raising up of future leaders for this house. And that includes leaders of all ages, but particularly we need to pray for and train up and raise up next generation leaders. And so one of the things that we're gonna be doing is um, in this, from this September, we're gonna be launching a new Kingsgate Leadership Academy that's gonna help us with that. And you can so follow the link and find out more if you're at all interested. So say after me, think bigger and beyond personally and intergenerationally. And then thirdly, think bigger and beyond regionally, regionally. Here we come to the crux really of Jesus' Great Commission. We'll be looking at that uh, in a couple of weeks time in particular, which is not just a call to build as it were an inward looking church community, but to build a missional community that goes out and represents Jesus in word and deed to a lost and dying world. Hence he says, what's the uh, great commission here? It says, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. And he starts with in Jerusalem and all Judea. You know, it's a little bit like this here in Kingsgate. We have, if you like, we've got three city bases just like they had a city that they were to reach, you know, Peterborough, Cambridge, and Leicester. But we also have thousands of people who travel from surrounding towns and villages. And I just wanna spend a moment honoring and celebrating all those who travel in. And this is not a, a, a kind of a complete list, but I just wanna celebrate the fact that from various towns and key areas, we've got people who travel into one of our locations from Ely, from Camborne, from St. Neots. As I get near to you, you can cheer. Kettering, Corby, Stamford, Oundle, Oakham, Bourne, Boston, Spalding, Deepings, Wisbeach, March, Huntingdon, and the Alconbreys. Why don't we just welcome and celebrate every single person who travels in to be part of Kingsgate. But if we're to think bigger and beyond, this is just the beginning. I believe God is giving us an assignment to see an expansion of the kingdom of God across this whole region. Areas of our cities that are unreached, more of God's um, presence into the towns and the villages around. You know, there are hundreds of thousands of people right now in, in our region who go to no church, who've never heard the gospel, who are facing a lost eternity. And God is calling us individually and together to reach them with the good news of Jesus like never before, amen? That's why we're not gonna stop. Because we have the, the, the calling to see people's lives transformed now and for eternity. So as we go, and as more and more people coming in and more and more people are coming in, we need to get ready to, to enlarge our thinking, both bigger and beyond. So it will include things like almost certainly having to think about putting on more services or in case of some of the campuses moving venues or piloting different gatherings in the region. It will mean expanding our existing buildings and building new ones. Which is why on March the 3rd, our next special offering, um, a key part of that is firstly gonna, we wanna continue to invest ahead of time to help Kingsgate Cambridge with the building or the purchasing of a future building in that strategic city. Come on, let's believe for Cambridge, for a building that can be a, a family home in Cambridge. And then here in Peterborough, you may not be aware, but we've still got a lot of this building still to fit out, as well as a whole bunch of land that we can develop. And so the first thing we're gonna do as a result of this offering is we're gonna put in the final 350 seats right up the top there to make more room for more people coming in. Ready for this to go to its capacity? 1,800 seats. That's what we're gonna be investing towards. 
But also, we want to create more room. There's a whole wing up, up top there, trust me, that is yet to be developed. And as we develop that, it's going to release more space for the growing children's and youth ministries too. So more about that next week. So think bigger and beyond. We're going to enlarge regionally, but we mustn't stop there because Jesus didn't stop there. Jesus also called his disciples to think bigger and beyond internationally. Can you just say that? Internationally. And here, really, Jesus begins to <laughs> really stretch the thinking of these, these faithful Jewish disciples. The first thing he does, as it were, he shakes their cultural, racial perspective. And he says, the first place you need to go after Jerusalem and Judea is you need to go get ready for this bombshell. It's hard to imagine what a shock it would have been, and to Samaria. If you know anything about the history of that, there was real enmity and divide between uh, Jews and Samaritans. But you know, Jesus Christ came. He, he went to the cross. He shed his blood. He rose from the dead. He's going to pour out his spirit to break down every racial and cultural divide because he's come to build a church family that is on the day, on, on, in heaven, going to be filled with every tribe, every tongue, every language, every people, worshipping him for all eternity. And this is the beginnings of this. Again, I mentioned intergenerational, but, intergenerational, but we're uh, just, Karen and I, so grateful to God that we're not a monocultural church. We have people who've made Kingsgate their home from all different nations, some moving from other parts of the UK, others moving into the UK, and they say, Kingsgate is my home. And so over the next three to five years, we want to press into that more and more. We want to reach more and more people from all different nationalities. That's part of our international mandate. Not just to see them welcomed in, we want to partner together, don't we, to create a beautifully diverse and inclusive church family where every person can say, this is my home, this is where I belong, and this is where I'm going to live out my God-given destiny and purpose in life. Why don't we just thank God for all that he's going to do, and let's work together to continue on this journey. So there's, if you like, the cultural dimension uh, where we're building locally. But I'm glad that Jesus didn't even stop there. He talks about, if you like, I want you to go to those who are near you but culturally are far from you. But then he adds in, and I'm so glad he added this in, and also, by the Spirit, you're going to go to the ends of the earth. I'm glad he included that, aren't you? Because as a result of that, the gospel starts spreading into what we know as modern day Turkey. It goes into Greece. And then after a few centuries, it, it finally comes to this little old island in the north of Europe. Aren't you glad that Jesus said to the ends of the earth and we get included? Thank God for God's grace. And thank God there were a bunch of spirit-filled um, Christians, apostles, evangelists, ordinary believers who didn't keep the good news themselves, but they had a heart to see the ends of the earth's reach. 2,000 years on, I want to tell you, the gospel literally has gone right across the world. I think often we can think, well, you know, you hear bad news stories and, you know, the church in the West is declining and, you know, Parts of the church are compromising. But I want to tell you, right across the nations, there is an unprecedented outpouring of the Spirit and a harvest of souls such as we've probably never seen in history. Don't believe the press. Jesus is alive. The Spirit is moving. And we get to pay a small part in God's plan for the salvation of reaching to the ends of the earth. Amen. So there's a number of the ways that we can do this. Firstly, we have, as many of you know, an online ministry. Um, believe that our online services and online campus are a beautiful vehicle in which we can reach people. In fact, why don't we welcome anybody who is from another city other than our three kind of in-person campuses, either in this nation or internationally watching right now. We say welcome. <laughs> so glad you've joined us today. So it's online ministry. Secondly, we have overseas mission partners. We have um, missions partners uh, as a church, people like um, organizations like Belembu um, or um, Heart for Lebanon. But also I know there are a number of individuals, increasing number of individuals who are actively involved in missions work. And so we want to see an increase of our missions work in the next three to five years. Third area is God has give, given us the opportunity to produce resources that bless churches way beyond Kingsgate. So some of you may remember during COVID, I wrote a book and we developed some films 
um, where, on, along the whole theme of well-being. And that well-being journey has gone to many churches across the UK. And also, um, I'm hearing of increasing other nations who are saying we want those resources. So thank God, together we've been able to partner uh, to bless other churches and ministries. But also, um, this Easter, we've been working now for some time with the Bible Society, with Hope, in a partnership with Kingsgate, to produce some new resources uh, around the resurrection called Alive. And so we're praying that God will breathe on this and bless this, and many people will come to Christ and get revived as a result of a new resurrection project, Easter 2024. Amen? And then the fourth area is... Uh, the European learning community. Last eight years, we've been ru running uh, learning communities where leaders from many of the largest and most influential churches across the UK and some in Europe too have come here to be equipped. But also one of the things that's been happening is, uh, is relationships and a sense of collaboration increases. God has been increasing the unity of the church across our nation. And as of this October, we're launching, as it were, a new phase and a different kind of partnership, this time with increasing sense of partnering with other key networks across the UK. And I'm excited, not only because many churches are gonna be equipped, but can I believe that this coming together, the walls of competition come down, the sense we're all in this together. I believe we're playing our part to help prepare for a fresh move of spirit across our nation, amen? How many know that God, it's great what God's doing overseas, but I want to tell you, God still has a heart and a mandate for this nation. Amen. I know many of you have come to this nation with a mandate and a calling to play your part, to see revival and an outpouring and an awakening in this nation. Uh, I, I was reminded of a particular, I was in worship in a conference in the US about five, six years ago, and I suddenly saw a picture of the UK, and it was something a bit like this where I saw lights coming on all across the new UK. But notice they're all kind of joined up. The sense to which there's something about the body of Christ getting united across the UK is an essential prerequisite for a full outpouring and an awakening across our nation. Amen. Let's be believing that. The day of the UK church is ahead of us, not just behind us. Amen. I don't want to always be talking about historic revivals. I want us to be part of and play a key part in a revival now, in our time, in our day, to see multitudes swept into the kingdom of God. Talking about a move of the Spirit. And if we think back everything I've shared, thinking bigger and beyond, just highlights, we're not gonna do this on our own. Can I say we're not called to do this on our own? Neither were Jesus' first disciples. So he gives them the commission, but do you know what he's already said to them? He says, hey, before you go out and fulfill all this, he says this, wait for the gift my father promised. Do you know, there's many things God can give us, but aside from salvation, do you know what the greatest gift that the father can give us? His Holy Spirit. That's the greatest gift. And then he says in verse five, he says, you will be baptized, that means immersed, not sprinkled, immersed, drenched in the person and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And if you've been tracking with our previous series on Jesus' ministry, empowered by the Spirit, basically what Jesus is saying is, I've been immersed with the Spirit. This is how I've done what I'm going to do. But now I'm going to be with the Father. And now every single one of my people, every single person, person in every single place where they honor my name. There the Spirit is going to be. That's why we're going to see greater works even than in the ministry of Jesus because we have now an unlimited Jesus, no longer limited by his physical body on the earth, but he's the reigning glorified King. And now he is breathing and, and, and releasing his Spirit across the earth, all across believers and congregations. You will be immersed with the Spirit. How many could do with the fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit? Some of you, maybe you've never been filled the Spirit. Some of you may be feeling kind of a bit dry right now. Well, I've got, I've got good news for you. If we go back to what we're looking at, thinking bigger and beyond, at the very center, and what I believe is gonna undergird everything of these next three, year, three to five years, 
is we are going to experience an increasing measure of being spirit empowered. Let me say that together, spirit empowered. See, it's you will receive power. And as you receive power, I want to tell you, God is going to change your life and your thinking personally. Amen. As we receive power together and we invest in the next generation by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are going to see a move of God amongst our young people. As we allow the Holy Spirit to come upon us with bold witness across our cities and across our region, we are going to start impacting the region with the gospel of Christ. And by the power of the Spirit and by the grace of God and His favour alone, we are going to see new doors opened and greater doors open to see an inbreak of the, outbreak of the kingdom of God, both in this nation and internationally too. And everybody said, Amen. <laughs> Amen. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be unpacking this more. But the first thing we're going to do, starting on Monday morning, is we're going to seek God and we're going to pray. That's what the disciples did and that's what we're going to do. And as we do, we're praying for more of the Holy Spirit. We're praying for Him to set us free from all disappointment and everything that holds us back to enlarge our thinking. And then we're going to pray knowing that we're praying to this kind of God, an unlimited God. Let me read this to you. To Him who is able, say able, who is able to carry out His purpose and do, I love this, super abundantly more. <laughs> than all we dare ask or think. In other words, if we think we're thinking big, think again, because God can do immeasurably more, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to His power that's at work within us. To Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise in anticipation of what He's gonna do. Will you stand to your feet, please? We're gonna pray together. You know, as, as I said a few minutes ago, everything, this enlargement, it is a word for us, but it's also a word for me and it's a word for you. Think bigger and beyond. Don't limit what God wants to do in and through your life. Doesn't matter what age you are, doesn't matter what background you are, God has more for you. I'm going to say that again. God has more for you. And God responds to faith. God responds to expectancy. The reality is something, and I want to just home in on this thing of disappointment. You see, if you've got real disappointment in your heart, you can't just kind of will it away. It's like a heavy rock in your heart. You need to open up your heart, let Jesus to come in and heal you and set you free. And just as I believe He was doing something amongst the leaders a couple of weeks ago, I believe starting today, but we're also gonna be praying into it the next three days and we're gonna spend more time at touching heaven. I believe God wants to free a whole bunch of people from maybe personal disappointment, maybe there's, you know, we live in a broken world, we get disappointed, but I'm talking about heavy heart because God wants His people free, not to make this up, not to hype this up, but to say, God, give me a genuine hope and a genuine gift of faith so I can see what you wanna do in and through me and so that I can play my part. Wouldn't it be amazing? I'm just thinking about this. I'm looking at something I know many of you well. Just be amazing to me if every single member of Kingsgate got fully free and nothing was holding them back from what God have them. Wouldn't that be spectacular? Wouldn't that be amazing? How many think it's possible because that's what the Holy Spirit's about. Jesus came to set us free. And so right now, just, just to start the process, some of you will have a miracle right now. Others of you, this will be your, almost you're giving permission for the Holy Spirit to help you. Just put your hands on your heart right now. And you know where you're at, but why don't you just say, if this is an area for you, if any areas of disappointment come to mind, why don't you just say, Lord, I open my heart to you. This is by grace. He's sending His Word to heal. Hallelujah. He's sending His Word to, to free. Just to imagine you've got disappointment in your heart. So you're laying your hands on your, your heart. You just almost imagine Jesus laying hands on you. Then I just want to imagine you're, you're taking that disappointment out 
and you're almost like offering up that wounded heart to the Lord. Just, just, why don't you do this just in front of you? Just say, Lord, here, here I am. Heal me. Set me free. Just release it to Him right now. So that I can't deal with this. Some of you may be, you may disappoint me with God. Well, He can handle that. Don't hide it, don't bury it. Open it up to the Lord. Lord, right now, as people are, as they were offering up their hearts to you, I pray right now you'll come. You'll heal the pain of the past and you'll begin to birth the promises for the future. I pray for a new expectancy and new hope and new faith to arise in Jesus' mighty name. Just lay it down. And then why don't you just put your hands on, on your on your forehead, like on your sort of temples like this. Imagine this is your mind saying, God, and I don't want anything to limit you, limit you in any way in my life. Forgive me where I maybe got stuck. Some of you I know will have plateaued. Others of you more dangerously may feel like, to be honest, as I look back, the trajectory is I'm slipping back. We'll just say, Lord, forgive me right now. I'm in. I want to I wanna step into all that you have for me. For others of us, it may be insecurity or unbelief where you think, well, I've seen God move. Could, could, could it happen again? Yes, it can, because He's the unlimited Christ. Right now, we ask you to enlarge our thinking and set us free. We don't want to limit you in any way. We want to think bigger for our lives. We want to think beyond. Hallelujah. We think of a, a God who does immeasurably more than all we ask or think or imagine. Let dreams Old dreams, new dreams. Old visions, new visions. Reawaken in this moment by the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit of wisdom and revelation. I pray that You'll come over every single member, Lord. In their devotions this week, in their seeking You this week, in our prayer times this week, Lord, come with fresh vision, we pray. In Jesus' Name. And now let's just all lift up our hands as an act of surrender and worship. And we're now going to just ask for the Holy Spirit to come. Ask Him to move in Jesus' mighty Name. Let's worship together.